Let's go to prayer. Our dearly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, this place that we can come and worship you. Lord, we thank you for Franklin and his decision to be obedient to you in baptism this morning. And may we all encourage him in his walk uh, with you. And Lord, we just pray for this service, that everything is said and done. We bring honor and glory to you. We pray for the speaker this morning. And I just pray you just use him to bring uh, the words that you have for us this morning. Lord, we just bless each and every aspect of the service and for the children's church today as well. In the grace of Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I was told I'm doing an announcement, and I thought there was an announcement up here, so I'm going to wing this. If there's anything else that I forget, there are bulletins in the back, and I believe that those have been passed out. But the pastor did mention two things that needed to be highlighted. Uh, number one, Actually, they're both on the same day. There's a women's retreat and men modeling the master on the 12th of March. So if you have questions about the ladies retreat, thank you. Uh, if you would see Dawn and she can get you the information that you need for that. And then the men modeling the master, uh, that one is going to be at uh, South Baptist and Flint ladies are going to be at Trinity Baptist in Flushing, and uh, so if you would be interested in either one of those, make sure you avail yourself of that. Also, just the regular events of the church, we have uh, evening service again at 6 o'clock tonight, and then our teen clubs at 6.30, and prayer time at 7 on Wednesday night, so I'd like to encourage you to be at those when the doors of the church are open. I think that's all the ones he had me highlight. So let's turn to 400 in the hymnal. I'll live for Jesus. <clears throat>
answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. You may be seated. Men, if you'll come for offering. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day and uh, uh, the offering that we're about to take to use in our local ministry and around the world. We thank you for the blessings that you give us. We also thank you for Brother Pete being here and going to speak today and uh, just uh, the answers to many prayers that through him and his family. Just pray for him as he speaks today. Speak through him in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
Uh, in 478, we're going to sing the chorus, Only Trust Him. sing that last verse. We'd like to dismiss the children for Children's Church. If you'd stand with me as we sing, 135. this morning to introduce uh, Pete Caudell as our speaker. Uh, several weeks ago, we've been going through the book of Psalms, different chapters here and there, and I got to Psalm 23, and I started studying it, and I thought, wow, this is going to be good, but I don't think I can do this. I, I don't think I could preach this. So I thought of Pete, went and asked him. He said yes immediately, and, and he's been working on it, and I'm really, really excited and I hope you folks are excited as well, and I hope you listen. God is good. Amen. He is awesome. He's powerful. He's loving, forgiving. He has so many attributes. But today, you're seeing how he is involved. For the last two years, Frank and I have been going through what it means to be baptized. And he did it today. Yeah. On February 13th, 2022, Franklin would be baptized. And it just so happens his dad is speaking in the Sunday morning service. That's God's involvement. This God is involved in our lives for his glory. You are here because God wanted you here. For a reason. He's not just a God, some old man in the sky, watching down on us as chaos goes on. He is intimately involved in every aspect of our lives. This isn't our message, but it is something I'm excited about. I got to see my son be baptized on the day that I'm speaking on a Sunday morning. Who would have thought? The guy that started coming to this church, I started coming, and you guys asked me, hey, you got a CDL? I'm like, yeah. Oh, we need somebody to drive the bus. So I started driving the bus. Then it's like, hey, can you help the little kids in the elementary school learn Bible verses on Wednesday night? Then I'm in a little classroom downstairs helping little boys learn Bible verses. And then like, hey, we need some help in the teen room. Can you help in the teen room? And I moved down to the teen room. And from there, I'm like, I'll be in the teen room, but I'm just the game guy. There's no way you're going to get me to speak. <laughs> and now I'm helping run the, the youth group down there. And now here I am Sunday, Sunday morning speaking to you guys. Uh, 
It's amazing how God works in our lives. I want to thank everyone for your prayers. Uh, I'm doing well. I feel good. I should have another bone marrow biopsy in March. And that, shouldn't, uh, that should let us know if I'm 100% cancer-free, or at least transplant and cancer-free. I'm not going to go through the whole cancer event. I might bring it up once or twice as we're talking on Psalms 23. Um, but I'm not going to go through it. If you haven't heard my testimony, please go to the church's Facebook page, look it up, and uh, watch it. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here because my God is faithful and strong. So we're going to be in Psalms 23, so go ahead and turn there. I grew up in a church in which my grandfather was a pastor. He was a big, strong man. He is a big, strong man. Um, and when he walks into the room, his presence is known. He's a Marine. He's tough. I would go to his house as a teen and work out with him. And no matter what I lifted, he would always lift one more than me. And that would burn me up. He's 90 years old, and he still works out every day. He has this deep, growly, raspy voice. And when he preached, he was passionate and excited. And whenever he was speaking, he would start pounding out on the pulpit, and he'd be yelling. And it was awesome. I miss that sometimes. Even our pastor the last few weeks has been very passionate. And I think he's been on point. I tell you all this because I'm not dynamic and a wordsmith like them. I just want to bring it down just a few notches and, and see where it goes. But I do want to take this time to challenge the men here to step up. It's time to step up and share. We men all turn into Moses when the pastor asks us if we can speak. And we look at him and say, there's no way I have a stutter. Take care and let him do it. A million other excuses. Listen up, men. God didn't call priests and the educated to spread the gospel. He picked imperfect men, fishermen, tax collectors, an assassin. You think you can't use, you think he can't use you? I want to challenge you to jump at any opportunity God gives you to share, big or small. He wants to use those opportunities for his glory. God is going to use you to touch somebody's life. If you can't share the Bible with members of your church, how do you think you're going to be able to share the Bible with somebody who doesn't know Christ? Mm -hmm. If you truly believe that Christ is your personal Savior, why aren't you sharing him to everyone you come in contact with? I told Pastor and I told my wife and my mom that I'm not sure, but I think the bone marrow I received might have been from a missionary because I feel a sense of urgency <laughs> The urgency to share the great news. My mom, and she's probably right, said that's not the bone marrow. It's the Holy Spirit speaking. And don't question it, just do it. The world is looking for answers in the truth. And we have it in this book right here. Let me put it up here where you guys can see it. <laughs> Why keep it to ourselves? Let me share something with you. At our house, when the internet gets slow or it stops working, you have to shut it off and turn it back on to reset it. Well, I'm not sure, but I think God had to reset me. He was like, stop his heart. Let's wait 10 seconds. Okay, turn it back on. Now let's see if he's on fire for me. Well, let me tell you, I feel the fire. I feel the urgency to share, and I can't help it. And I pray I never have to be reset another time. The world is so hungry to hear the gospel. We need to share. Men. Even ladies, don't think about it. Just do it. Let the Holy Spirit use you. The Lord is coming soon. Please go out and tell everyone. Mm -hmm. So when Pastor asked me to speak today, I didn't even, he didn't even finish the sentence. And I said, yep, I'll do it. I'm not sure what I was getting into, and I'm not sure he knows what he's getting into. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So here we go. This should be fun. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for, I thank you for this opportunity. Please, Lord, let my words be clear and precise and that your word gets out. If somebody here does not know you as their personal Savior, Lord, that's what we're here for today, Lord. I want them to know you as their personal Savior. Lord, if somebody's here is struggling or, or any type of issues, Lord, 
they need to seek you for comfort. Psalms 23, Lord, we're going to go over that. Just please make it be clear. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Psalms 23, I believe it's a chapter, it's probably one of the most popular chapters in the Bible. I've heard these verses at funerals and in movies in every secular song, uh, not everyone, but I've heard them in secular songs. I've heard them even in a video game. When I was in high school, we would say a prayer before the football game, and it was always led by somebody on the football team. And one time it was quoted. I don't believe it was quoted correctly, but it was quoted. Most people have heard this verse. Most Christians even have it memorized. And if you don't, here's your homework. It's six short verses. Memorize it. It'll bring you comfort. So let's read Psalms 23. Psalms 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down on green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This chapter has helped so many people. It was kind of funny when Pastor announced that I would be preaching on Psalms 23. I, re I received many text messages, emails, and even phone calls of people sharing videos and poems and stories of how this chapter has helped them. I thank you for all of them. That was great. So some of this may sound familiar to some of you because I did use some of it. This is David writing about what he knew to be what he knew. He was a shepherd of a flock of sheep. This would sound a whole lot different if I was writing it. The Lord is my mechanic. I shall not break down. He maketh me stop at the closest gas station. <laughs> sounds a little bit different. But it's easy to write when you have knowledge of what you're writing about. And he found comfort in that. He starts out the verse, he starts out these verses with two words, the Lord. What is amazing that is if you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, the rest of these verses mean nothing. You will get no comfort from these verses. It just turns into a really nice poem. But if you know the Lord, you can see the comfort. Let's just take these verses and just dissect them verse by verse as a Christian. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Here he shows that the Lord wants a relationship with you and will supply all your needs. In John chapter 10, verses 11 and 10, the thief does not come to, if the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. He is the good shepherd. He's not just, he's, it's just not a job. He has to protect us. He is committed to his sheep. If he is willing to lay down his life to protect us, that is love. And if he's willing to sacrifice his life for us, he is willing to supply our needs. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He makes you take a break and he refreshes you. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness. He will heal you and guide you through your life for his name's sake. He wants to do this for his purpose. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He's going to protect you. For thou art with me. He shows faithfulness to us. Thy rod and your staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He gives us discipline and hope. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You are sacred to him and he gives in abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He gives blessing. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. He gives us security forever. 
eternity with him. How many of you have been in a situation where you were scared out of your mind? Really fearful for your life. I'm not talking about Mrs. Wright asked me to sing a special. I'm not talking about pastor asked me to pray in front of everybody. I'm talking about scared for your life. <clears throat> Think about that for a minute. In 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, it says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. If we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we should have confidence in God's plan for us. We need to show others how powerful and he really is, even in our weakness. Let me share a time when I was very scared. Everything I went through during my cancer treatment was bad. I had a lot of complications. One of them sticks out as the worst was I formed blood clots in my heart and my lungs. I remember being sick on Sunday and going to bed and I just couldn't sleep that whole night. I was having trouble breathing. I could not get comfortable. I laid in the bed and I waited till my mom and dad had woken up and I called them into the room. They had to come in, they had to clean me up, they had to dress me and then they carried me to the car. I was not able to walk. The car ride to Detroit was two hours long and I had to consciously think about breathing in and breathing out. My body was just not doing it on its own. I had to make myself breathe. But one thing about this car ride probably nobody knows was my dad was driving. And while he was driving, he was holding my hand. That touch of my dad holding my hand, he didn't talk to me, he just held my hand and drove. Let me tell you how much comfort that contact made me. Somehow, he was giving me strength through that contact. I can't explain it. He probably didn't realize it, but it was huge in keeping me calm. Once we got to the hospital, they did a bunch of tests and found the clots, and I was rushed into the cath lab. They couldn't sedate me because my heart was too weak, so I was awake the whole time. It was, I was laid out on a cold metal table. I was completely nude. They strapped my arms down and my legs down to the table. I couldn't move. They placed this board over my head that was hanging from the ceiling somehow, so I couldn't see and I couldn't move. During the procedure, it started to hurt really bad. I was screaming and I was smashing my head against the board trying to get off that table. There was this nurse who finally came to my head and started to talk to me. She held my head with her hand and she talked in a calm voice to calm me down and comfort me. I was able to focus on her voice <clears throat> and what she was saying to get through the procedure. I was in a dark valley. I was afraid. I was holding on to Christ. I was not holding on to Christ's hand. I was not listening to his voice. Even after knowing Christ for so many years and all those years in church and memorizing scripture and as soon as it got dark, I was afraid. I failed. I really failed. But I had people in my life that kept pointing me to Jesus, and I'm grateful for each one of them. Once my focus was straightened out, and not on me, but on Christ, everything fell into place, and I was calm and comforted, and now I'm driven. I remember asking, how did this happen to me? Why me? I know now he made me grab, his hand, grab for his hand, for comfort. Matthew 12, verses 28 through 31, Peter's walking on water. In verse 30, it says, but when I saw the winds boisterous, he was afraid. 
and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Now listen, verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, Thou of little faith, where dost thou doubt? That was me sinking. He reached out his hand to save me. Then he corrected me. And now he's making me stronger. There are valleys coming in all of our lives when we need to prepare. Maybe you're in a valley right now. Do you have fear about something? The world's upside down. I know. It's very stressful. Are you reaching out to Lord? Are you reaching out to hold the Lord's hand like I was holding on to my dad's hand? The Lord wants to reach, wants you to reach out to him. Are you listening to his voice and focusing on his voice? He wants you to listen to his direction and focusing on his voice. Maybe you're on a mountaintop right now. Everything's going well. I heard a pastor say, if you are on a mountaintop and everything is perfect, you better be preparing because if you want to get to the next mountaintop, you got to go through a valley to get there. So be prepared for the next challenge. But if you know the Lord as your personal Savior, what do you need to fear? Remember, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. At the end of this, at the end of the chapter, it says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This makes me think of verse John, or this makes me think of a verse in John 14. It says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. There where I there where I am, there ye may be also. Sounds like a promise to me. Come on, if that doesn't get you excited, hmm. you need to check your heart right now. We are here only temporary. We need to seize every opportunity to share God's word with everyone we come in contact. So many people are looking for answers and looking for truths. And we have it right here in this book. We carry it with us. Most of you guys probably have it on your phone. We can't keep it to ourselves. As our government likes to say, let's circle back. <laughs> to the first verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He wants a personal relationship with you. What is amazing with this personal relationship, you get all the benefits of the rest of this chapter. He will supply all your needs. He will give you you rest, healing, guidance, and purpose, testing, protection. He is faithful to us, and he disciplines us. What? I don't want discipline. Yes, you do. That's love. Mm -hmm. He offers hope, abundance, blessing, security, and eternity. And that's just from this chapter. That sounds like a pretty good benefit package. Marcia, could you uh, get that worked out for our union? <laughs> if you are here and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, please don't leave this church today without getting to know him. When we close in song, come forward. Let the pastor help you. He's kind of scary, but if he's too scary to approach, come see me. And see one of the deacons. If you're a lady and you need assistance, there are ladies here ready to help you. I would fast, didn't I, Pastor? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to close in prayer. Please, I hope you got something out of this today. Don't leave here if you don't know the Lord. He wants a relationship with you today. Let's close. Dear Heavenly Father, again, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to share. Um, I thank you for our pastor. He does this day in and day out. It took me a month to put this together. And I thank you for the opportunity to share. I thank you um, 
you know, people came up to me, Lord, you, you've seen them. Are you nervous? Are you scared? I wasn't. You comforted me. I thank you for that. I thank you for a godly family. I thank you for this church family. And I thank you for all those that stood behind me and helped me. Again, Lord, as we close, if there's somebody here that you're tugging on their heartstrings, give them the courage to stand up and to come forward. We're here. We're ready. We're prepared. As we sit and wait for you to return, give us the confidence to share your word with everyone we come in contact this week. Help us to be bold. In your name we pray. Amen. You'd stand with me. Turn to 158. 158. <laughs> I don't know if everybody can hear me or not. I'm fairly loud, but this is just a little certificate of baptism for you, Franklin. And uh, a lot of times, uh, most times, in fact, when somebody's baptized, they also kind of join the church the same day. So uh, on Wednesday night, did you still want to do that? Thank you. You still want to join the church? Yes. All right, all right. <laughs> so I better make sure. So Wednesday night he gave us testimony of the deacons of salvation, and now based upon uh, your witnessing him being baptized by immersion, uh, the deacons are recommending that he join the church. Uh, so we would need a uh, motion, uh, Lyle Jameson to make a motion, and and Carrie Ludwig as a second. Uh, so you can uh, write this down uh, as our official church clerk. So, if you are a member and you are in favor of Franklin joining the church, say amen. Amen. Is there anyone opposed? The motion's carried. A hundred percent. So, I'm just, I'm just excited about that. So, if you are a church member, or, uh, part of this church family, and you want to walk by Franklin, I think we call it the giving the right hand of fellowship. Shake his hand, congratulate him uh, before you leave, and let's say one more prayer before we do that. Uh, Father God, I'm thankful for uh, Franklin and his family and uh, all his cousins and uncles and, and people and aunts that are here today, and, and we're just thankful for this chance uh, to see him, uh, to watch him uh, uh, step out in faith and obedience and be baptized, taking a chance in the cold water in front of everyone, and we're just thankful that he's officially uh, joining our family. And uh, uh, Lord, uh, I just pray that you would, uh, as he's getting older and more mature and wiser, that you would just guide and direct him on, on what ministry uh, he would fit in best here at this church in order to further your kingdom. And uh, Lord, I'm just looking forward uh, to many, many years of friendship and, and uh, family closeness and community with Franklin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.